deer in the headlights. Yes, yes. I think that's going to be the same person we're watching tonight. Anyway, hello to everybody and happy Monday. Tonight's going to be volume one, part three of the deposition of the lovely and ever so talented ex-Disney cashier and restaurateur, Nicole Stratman. Uh, I don't remember who Nicole Stratman was in the context of the case, so I'm not going to pretend I need to sit through these with you guys and watch and comment and learn as we go. But that is okay. If you want to fund our effort, particularly our effort with respect to our own little AI model, any and all donations are appreciated. There is the link to PayPal to make one. And also Patreon subscribers, you guys keep us alive, man. Very cheap subscriptions, but you get access to a whole bunch of stuff. And by the way, James uploaded a whole bunch of new data to Patreon today. So there's a bunch of new fresh data. God damn it. That's the wrong link. Let me try that again. Why is this screwing me up? Ah, boomer. What the fuck? What's going on here? Oh, there we go. It was just lagging out. So let me try again. Copy. So bizarre because it didn't lag out on that one. Anyway. Oh, God. Wrong one. I am just like having trouble here. Let me try again. Jesus Christ. All right. Patreon. James just... Lo blah, 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 blah. James just... Uploaded a bunch of new stuff, new material on Patreon. So subscribers, go check it out. See what's there. A whole bunch of new stuff. People that have not yet. So, so you're home. Oh, how come you're going home? home? You haven't been home in months. Why are you going home tonight? Because <laughs> I want to go home. Oh, my God. Oh, that's kind of bizarre. Anyway, anyway, James is going home. That's kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, bum, 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 bum. So anyway, Nicole Stratman, volume one, part three, 30 minutes long. And we'll try to see where we go. I will tell James hi. He already walked out the door, so, though, so I'll have to tell him tonight when I get home. But um, anyway, here we go. Nicole Stratman, add to stage. Oh, and this is a neat button for her, add to stage, because she was a cast member at Disney, remember? That's what they call all their people cast members. And the funny thing is I have no recollection of doing her depo, but when I watch her here, she freaking looks like a Disney person. Oh, my God. I'll bet she's woke as fuck, too. Anyway, here we go. No politics. Well, you know what the word deprive means, right? Take something away. Take something away or interfere with. Okay. Okay, so I'm asking you in your training that you've had in these many years, since at least 2010, have you ever learned that when you take a child from a parent mm -hmm. in the absence of an emergency, without a warrant or consent, that is a deprivation of both the child's rights under the Constitution and the parent's rights? Have you learned that? Objection lacks foundation, calls for speculation, incomplete hypothetical, calls for legal conclusion. I'm just asking you what you've learned. Either they've taught you that or they haven't taught you that. It's really simple. Right. I think they have taught me that. I'm trying, I mean, those specific words in that exact way, and you know, I can't say, oh, yeah, I completely remember exactly how that was said, and, mm -hmm. but it sounds familiar. Okay. So at least that concept you do recall from your training. The concept I recall. Okay. Do you also recall from your training, and while we're on this concept of deprivation, that both parents and children are entitled to due process before you deprive them of some right? Objection at last foundation, calls for speculation, calls for legal conclusions, it's argumentative. What do you mean by due process? Well, it's also let's go back to your <laughs> training. Did they teach you what's meant by due process? They did, I don't remember. So you don't know what due process is? Objections, argumentative, and mistakes for testimony. Sitting here today, you don't remember what's meant by the words due process? 
I think I have an idea of what it okay. is, but could I, you know, rattle off a definition exactly at the moment? I can't, but yeah, well, just to make sure that there's a process in place before interfering. Okay. That's your concept, is to make sure there's a process no. in place before <laughs> interfering? I don't, I don't know. Okay. You don't recall from training, any of your training or experience that parents and children have a due process right, a fundamental right to stay together without your interference in the absence of emergencies, warrants, or consent? Objection's been asked and answered. Yeah, I understand that. You do understand that. Okay, so what is your understanding of, in that phrase? Okay. What is your understanding of what they meant when they were teaching you that parents and children have this fundamental due process right? Objection calls for speculation, lacks foundation. Well, if you were in the training, it doesn't call for speculation. You're I'm asking, asking her. You're asking what their understanding is. No, I'm, a, I'm asking her. Can I have you the question reread, please? Was. Can I have the question reread? We'll see what I asked her. What is your understanding of what they meant when they were teaching you that parents and children have this fundamental due process right? Same objections. Let's go ahead. I want to know your understanding. My understanding is that we have to do an investigation and we can't just go in and just take kids away willy-nilly. Like you have to have facts and evidence to support that the child is at risk or could be abused or is at in danger in the care of their parent or legal guardian. And so we need to have the evidence to be able to, to support that the removal is for the safety of the child. So I understand it in that way. I, I get what due process is. Mm -hmm. To me, that's more of a legal term that I don't go around using and I don't, I'm not, it's not, my language to use it in that way. So for me, that situation is more about making sure that we're not removing children without the proper way to do so by warrant, exigency, or parental consent. Let me ask it, because we covered this a little bit earlier and it mm -hmm. didn't seem clear to me that you truly understood, and I'll, I'll try asking again a different way. Mm -hmm. You do understand, based on your training and the policies that govern the work you do, Orange County's policies, that the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments of the United States Constitution restrict your ability to just go in and, as you put it, willy-nilly take kids. Objection. Asked and answered. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, I mean, when, when you phrase it that way, that we can't just go in and just be taking kids away with, just right. for whatever feeling we have or whatever. So you would agree with me that your powers are restricted so, by the Constitution? Objection is argumentative. Go ahead. Yeah, you can say it that way if you want to say it that way. And that's your understanding. It's not just how I'm saying it. It's based on the multitude of trainings that you've had, and we'll go through some of them. It's based on the multitude of trainings that you've had. You are restricted by the 4th and 14th Amendments the United States Constitution in your interactions with parents and children, right? Yeah, there are restrictions put on right. it, and then there's other avenues to go down. Okay. okay. See how easy that was? We didn't need to take all day getting there. If she just said that in the beginning, I wouldn't have come back to it. Okay. So, we've talked about how you can't take a child without a warrant, consent, or exigent circumstances, right? That's right. Okay, let's talk a little bit first now about what is a warrant? What is it, according to your training? A warrant is a document written by the investigating social worker containing the facts that they have gathered thus far, making a request to the court, to a judge, to either remove there's a we have different we have different warrants for different things okay but it's me. a document that's drafted by the social worker. drafted by the social worker reviewed by the supervisor 
submitted to county council, submitted to the judicial officer, okay. who then will make a determination whether to grant that warrant or not. Do you know whether there's a difference between a warrant and a warrant application? Yes, now mm -hmm. that you put it that way. Okay, what's the difference? So what I was talking about really would be considered the application. Okay, what is yeah. a warrant? A warrant then is the, is the document that's signed by the judge indicating whatever orders have been made. Okay, so a warrant, as far, insofar as you understand it, would be a court order? Yes. Okay. And in the context of child abuse investigations, there are several different types of court orders that you can get in advance of, that is before actually undertaking some conduct towards the child, right? Objections and incomplete hypothetical. Go ahead. Answer, yes. Okay. For example, there's warrants that you can get or court orders you can get authorizing you to enter the home. Are you texting somebody? I am not. No, it's, it's okay. I'm not, no. <laughs> I, I don't, I kind of wish I did, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. No, I, I just see you keep going down and your fingers are moving. I know. It's kind of like my daughter when she's texting. <laughs> I have. She's not texting. She doesn't have a phone in her possession. All right. No, it's a really, really bad habit that I have, but that's All what right. I do. Why don't we do this? Let's take a little break. We've been going about an hour anyway. I'll give you okay. a chance to unwind. To pick on my fingers a little more without. We're off the record at 11.13 a.m. We're back on the record at 11.23 a.m. When we're talking about the various different types of warrants that uh, you may need to get as a social worker, one of those warrants would be, for example, the warrant to enter a person's home, right? Yes. Okay. Another type of warrant that you would be required to get in the absence, and all of this is in the absence of exigent circumstances or consent, okay? Just for this line of questioning. Okay. Okay. So another one of the types of warrants that you would be required to get under those circumstances would be a warrant to conduct a medical examination of a child. Is that right? No. You don't need to get a warrant to do a medical exam on a child? A forensic medical exam. Only a forensic? All right, everybody. I just got a um, order granting summary judgment on this very issue regarding medical care of children that are in the temporary protective custody of the county. And it was a summary judgment in my favor. I published the entire thing on X. So if you wanna see the order and you're not a Patreon subscriber, go follow me on Twitter slash X and you'll see the whole order right there. It's 23 pages. I had to put it up in like five different you know, strung together posts because they only let you put up four pages at a time. But if you want to read the order and get a very clear understanding of your rights with respect to the medical care and treatment of your child while the child's in the temporary custody before your parental rights have been terminated, go read that order because those are your rights. And all of these fuckers do not abide by it. And, um, you know, once I get this thing worked out, we're probably going to do another class action in San Diego for injunctive relief, and then we'll roll it out all across the state, hit county after county, because they're all doing the same shit. But that's going to take a little while. But anyway, it is there. So Lawrence, come on, man, catch up with the times. Ever since Elon bought Twitter, it's been a much better platform. You should go back there and check it out. Anyway, let's get on with uh, the lovely and talented ex-Disney princess, Nicole Stratman. What time period? Let's start at 2015. 2015. Is that the only kind? What was the question? Sorry. Can I have the question reread again and okay. the, go to the beginning of the question so, so she gets the whole context? Just give a stab. You don't, you don't need to get a warrant to do a medical exam on a child. Go back just a little further. 
So another one of the types of warrants that you would be required to get under those circumstances would be a warrant to conduct a medical examination of a child, is that right? Answer, no. Question, you don't need to get a warrant to do a medical exam on a child? Answer, a forensic medical exam. Question, only a forensic? There's only a forensic medical exam where you need to get a warrant? It's from 2015? Yeah. There's a comprehensive physical exam as well. Do you need a warrant for that? I think we do need a warrant for that. Did you need a warrant for that in 2015 according to your training? We had a training on comprehensive physical exams and parental consent for those. It was the latter part of 2015. I want to say it was like November 2015. November 2015, was that the first time that you recall ever being trained on that issue? That is the need to obtain a warrant to do a comprehensive physical exam of a child? absent a court order. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I recall needing a warrant. We had a court order, a miscellaneous minute order prior to that. That was a general order though, right? Yeah, but to my understanding it encompassed that. Okay, and you don't understand uh, one way or the other whether or not a general order that is a non-specific order satisfies the 4th or 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. You don't have any understanding about that. Objection calls for a legal conclusion. In fact, she's going to tell me that no, she doesn't have any understanding, so it's not a legal conclusion. Can I have the question reread, please? And you don't understand one way or the other whether or not a general order, that is a non-specific order, satisfies the Fourth or Fourteenth Amendments to the United States Constitution. You don't have, have an understanding about that? Same objection. Go ahead. I don't recall what I understood at that time for it to, un mm -hmm. I think there was an issue. Okay, but now after that, 2015 training in November, you do have an understanding that in order to do a comprehensive physical examination in the absence of exigent circumstances or consent, you would need to get a warrant or court order, right? Yes. Okay. You just didn't necessarily know back in, say, July, August, September of 2015. You didn't know that you would need to get a warrant or somebody would need to get a warrant to do a comprehensive physical exam of a child without parental consent or exigency. Object Am I getting that right? Objection at Locks Foundation. Calls for speculation. You can answer if you know. It's also argument. Do you need a rewrite? Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah. I lose it. No, that that's fine. No, I, I understand mm -hmm. that. And that's why I'm trying to frame the questions to avoid the objection, but she does it anyway. and. You know, it's, okay. it's just going to make things go longer than they really need to. You just didn't necessarily know back in, say, July, August, September of 2015. You didn't know that you would need to get a warrant or somebody would need to get a warrant to do a comprehensive physical exam of the child without parental consent or exigency. Did I get that right? Same objections also calls for legal conclusion. The question is, you didn't know, did you? I didn't know because I thought we already had something in place to cover us. Okay. And the first time ever that you learned that, in fact, you do need to get a warrant under those circumstances would have been in that November 2015 training, right? Yes. Same question with respect to medical procedures. Here today, based on your more recent training, you understand that to do medical procedures on a child that are non-emergency in nature, you either need uh, parental consent or a warrant. 
or exigency? Well, that would oh, be Oh, you said it was an exigency, yeah, right. So. Right, let's just listen carefully yeah. to the question. And it's not a trick question, it's just, I mean what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Just listen carefully to the question and then answer that question. Same question with respect to medical procedures. Here today, based on your more recent training, you understand that to do medical procedures on a child that are non-emergency in nature, you either need parental consent or a warrant. Objection lacks foundations and incomplete hypothetical. Go ahead, it's just based on your training. Yes. Okay. When did you first receive that training? I believe that was in November 2015, if I recall correctly. And when we're talking about non-emergency medical procedures, based on your training and understanding of your training, does that include vaccinations? I don't know if that would include vaccinations. How about skeletal surveys? Would we need to get a warrant to do a non-emergency skeletal survey or parental consent? Yes. Okay. Sean? Yeah. I need to shut this door. Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. All right. We're off record at 11.31 a.m. We are back on the record at 11.31 a.m. Am I correct that when we talk about exigent circumstances, what, what we're talking about is a situation to be considered exigent must have documentable factual information to indicate the child is in immediate danger of serious bodily harm or that evidence may dissipate if action is delayed. Am I correct about that? Yes. Okay. And further, the intervention or that immediate action by the social worker must be reasonably necessary to avert the specific injury that you're concerned about. Yes. Okay. So let me make sure I've, I've got this right, and you'll tell me if this is something you don't recognize. And if, it's, if you don't remember, tell me that. We'll get into the materials and see if we can't refresh your recollection. But am I correct that you learned as early as maybe even 2010 that in order to lawfully remove a child from the custody of its parents, the social worker must have in his or her possession at the time of the removal specific and articulable evidence to show that the child is reasonably likely to suffer severe bodily injury or death and there is no lesser intrusive alternative means of preventing that injury. We're talking about exigency. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that statement I made, and so far as you recall it and understand it for your training, from your training, that is the standard that you as a social worker would have to meet before removing a child without getting a warrant or parental consent. Yes. Okay. Do you recall when you first learned that concept? I think it was that training in 2010, I would say. Okay. So certainly by July of 2015, July 8th, 9th specifically, you would have known that in order to lawfully remove a child from the custody of its parents, you must have specific and articulable facts to show that the child is likely to suffer severe bodily injury or death, and there's no lesser intrusive way other than removing the child of preventing the specific injury that you're concerned about. You would have known that on July 9th, 2015. Yes. Okay. Have you ever learned in any of your trainings anywhere that unwarranted seizures are presumptively unlawful? Objections to the incomplete hypothetical. Calls for legal conclusion. Answer. No. I'm not asking for your conclusions. I'm asking for what you've learned. If you haven't learned it, your answer should be no, I, I haven't learned I it. I don't remember. Okay. That sounds like a, a lot of legal words in there. So what, in your training, they don't use a lot of legal words? They do. Uh-huh. But I may not always be able to uh, remember them. Okay. 
So layman's terms is something. But in your training, they don't use layman's terms, do they? Sometimes to, to further explain something. Okay. That would be in an oral component though, right? Correct. Okay, not in the written materials. Right. In the written materials, they actually use the legal language. Yes. Okay. Both. Sometimes it's both. And both. then when you're in that lecture setting, they're showing you a PowerPoint with the legal language, there's somebody there live so that if you have a question about what a particular legal term means, you can ask them, right? Yes. And in fact, sometimes they'll even think a couple steps ahead and explain for you what the legal terms mean, right? Yes. Okay, so when you're sitting through that training, you feel like you have a pretty good understanding of the legal concepts that are being taught to you. Yes. And when you leave that training, do you retain that same feeling? That you understood the legal concepts that were taught to you? Yes. Okay. I thought you did. I just want to make sure we could clear that up. Let's see. Number. As a supervisor now, actually back in 2015 as a supervisor, did you have a checklist of some kind that you could go through with your subordinates when they were making decisions about whether or not to remove a child without getting a warrant? No, I didn't have a checklist. They didn't give you any sort of, sort of checklist or formula, questions you could look at or ask? I don't recall having a checklist. Okay. Did you ever learn in any of your trainings or your review of Orange County's policies that delay in response negates exigency? That is, delay in removing a child can negate claims of exigent circumstances? I do recall that. Mm -hmm. Do you also recall learning that hospital holds? Hospital holds also require a warrant, exigent circumstances, or parental consent. Yes. Okay. Did you also learn in your training that parents have a constitutional right to make arrangements for the continued care of their children while they're unavailable for their children? Yes. Okay. What did you learn about that specifically? That if a parent cannot care for their child for, it could be any number of reasons. Mm -hmm. One example could be incarceration. Okay. That they could um, designate somebody else to care for their child. And they don't need government permission to do that. They have that right, correct? Yes. Okay. And the same holds true, like, for example, with grandparents. If a parent's, say, incapacitated because they're at the hospital, let's say, they have the constitutional right to designate the grandparent to take care of their children while they're at the hospital. Objection. Well, the parent's at the hospital, right? Objection incomplete hypothetical. Just according to your training. Yes, a parent can designate someone else to care for their child, either temporarily or long term. Okay, and they, and they don't need your permission, that is social services, the government's position, uh, p uh, permission to do that. Am I right? Objections and incomplete hypothetical. Lacks foundation. You can answer. Yes, you're right. Okay. And that's according, again, that's according to your training and experience working these many years now with the County of Orange. Correct. Now, am I also correct that you have learned that when you're working with law enforcement, or when law enforcement is involved in one of your cases, your workers are required to make an independent determination of exigent circumstances or parental consent? 
Yes. Okay. That is to say the assigned social worker will make an independent determination of exigent circumstances separate and apart from law enforcement. Yes? Yes. And that's according to your training and the policies that you're familiar with with the County of Orange. Yes. Okay. So let me make sure in summary that I'm understanding this correctly. We have a social worker. We have a law enforcement officer. And maybe the law enforcement officer says, oh, there's exigency here. The social worker has an independent obligation to make her own assessment, independent from law enforcement, of whether or not exigent circumstances exist to remove that child. Yes. Okay, when did you first learn that? I don't remember, but probably when I started working in emergency response, I think. Okay, so certainly by July 2009, well, let's say the early morning hours of July 2009, you would have known in your position as a supervisor that social workers where there's law enforcement involvement have an independent obligation to determine whether or not exigent circumstances exist separate and apart from the decisions of law enforcement. Just to clarify, do you mean July of 2015? What did I say? July of 2009. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. That's can I have the record. Uh, yeah. Why don't you say? <laughs> All right, can I have the question reread, please? I'll try and get it the same the next time around. <laughs> So certainly by July 2009, well, let's say the early morning hours of July 2009. Twice. You would have known in your position as a supervisor that social workers, where there's law enforcement involvement, have an independent obligation to determine whether or not exigent circumstances exist, separate and apart from the decisions of law enforcement. Okay, let me try that again. So you understood as early as July 9th, 2015, the early morning hours of July 9th, 2015, that your workers, your subordinate workers, had a duty to make an independent assessment of exigent circumstances separate and apart from any decisions of law enforcement on that issue, correct? Correct. At any point in time, on either July 8th or July 9th, did you instruct your subordinate, Laura Todd, that she was required to make a determination of exigent circumstances independently from law enforcement? I would have not given her that instruction. Why not? Specifically. Because I know she understands that. How do you know she understands that? I had been supervising her for a period of time already. Um, over a year at that point in time and also she had been in emergency response for quite some time prior to me coming in and I knew she understood that from working with her from okay. just working with her I knew that and you understand that authority from law enforcement alone is not sufficient to take a child into protective custody you understand that Okay, so for example, if a sheriff tells you, go out somewhere and grab that kid, that is not sufficient authority to lawfully go out and grab that kid, right? Objection, it's an incomplete hypothetical, it lacks foundation, it calls for speculation. Do you need it reread? We can reread it. Uh, no, I don't need, I don't need you to re um, I. If they're telling me mm -hmm. to take the child into custody under my authority, no, I wouldn't. Okay. can't do that. In fact, if law enforcement is telling you, actually, let me just ask you this, because I, I think this is a little bit different than what you're saying. And I want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. I'll show you what will mark as exhibit number 67 to your deposition. <clears throat> Do you recognize exhibit number 67? 
Yes, I do. Okay, what is exhibit number 67? It's a policy and procedure on warrants. And that is Orange County Social Services Agency official policy on warrants, correct? Yes. First, let me, I already typed a comment to June 44, but you're absolutely right. It's not appropriate to lump all of them into the same pile as the bad ones. So when I, when I say these fuckers, I'm really just referring to the people who commit civil rights violations against parents and children. So, I, so don't, please don't think that I'm referring to you know, all the social workers and all the government social workers, even in the world who do this work as fuckers, because that's not my intention. I know both intellectually and experientially that there are some very, very good workers out there who are, who are really trying hard to do a good job and to take their obligations seriously. And I do recognize that. And I don't want to lump them all into, I don't, why, why am I so fuzzy? That's really weird. Huh, that's, that's, that's odd. It's not focusing. It's supposed to have an infinity focus, but some, oh, you know what? The mic maybe was in the way. I don't know. Anyway, there's something going on there. So with that, where are we? Uh, Patreon questions. We don't have any Caps and Sims questions tonight, but we have some Patreon questions. First one is when filing a 1983 lawsuit against several DHS workers, police officers in federal court, um, do you generally sue the whole state? I guess this is, is in Hawaii. This is a question from Dr. Sarah. Or the agencies, DHS, police department, et cetera, along with the individuals or just the individuals. Normally it's gonna depend on who administers the program in the state. When you're suing police, you know, they did something, then you're going to sue the individual officers who did the bad deed, plus you're going to sue the city or the county if it's sheriffs um, for a Monell violation if the conduct of the cops was undertaken pursuant to some policy custom practice or lack of training or inadequate training. With respect to the actual DHS or CPS agency, it's going to depend on who administers the program. If it's the county administering the program, then you will sue the county. If it's the state administering the program, remember that 11th Amendment immunity is going to bar you from suing the state collectively. Rather, you would just be able to sue the individual uh, social workers. So there is a distinction. Um, What's the next question? Also, when a lawsuit names the agency and the individuals, do you sue in both official and individual capacity or just individual? If you're suing the individuals, you sue them in individual capacity. Anytime that you name an individual human being in their official capacity, that is the same as just naming the agency. And in the case of a state agency, you're going to be barred by 11th Amendment immunity. So that's that's an issue. Keep that in mind. You can name the individuals when it's administ a program administered by the state, but if you name the state, you're going to get barred. Uh, so what's the next one? Um, says, would love to see slash be directed to an example of a federal 1983 complaint, and if you would generally sue the state or county rather then in federal court, please explain why. It really depends on the venue. Um, for example, if I have one of these cases up in Orange County, I'd prefer to put it in state civil complex as opposed to federal. If I have one down in San Diego or you know Central District or not, yeah, Central District, then I'd put it in federal court. Although I state court is actually okay in downtown LA, so I, you know, it'd be a toss up. I don't know. But you have to look at the venue considerations. You know, do you have a conservative venue? Do you have a, a liberal venue? What's your jury pool going to look like? There's a whole bunch of considerations that you, you have to weigh when deciding whether to sue in federal or state court. And one of them, in fact, is when you sue in state court, remember, um, the state court judges, they've all done a rotation in juvenile dependency and maybe not probably, but maybe sympathetic to CPS. 
So that's another thing to consider when you're deciding where to actually sue. So I hope those answered your questions, Dr. Sarah. Moving on, we've got Happy Whoa to direct you to a complaint. You're a Patreon subscriber, so go look at the filings in Pellerin. That was actually in the state of Arizona. And um, we sued the individuals, not the state, because there was 11th Amendment immunity. And that might provide you a, a fairly good template. Happy Warrior. Mr. McMillan, I viewed your deposition of Misha Hammond. Yeah, one of my favorites. From the Bruno V. County of Los Angeles case on YouTube. Is it possible for you to share the interrogatories and request for admissions that you requested from her and what production documents you asked of her? Uh, yeah, it is possible, but not in that case because she was not a defendant in that case. We actually deposed her just to develop evidence to support our Monell claim based on lack of discipline, lack of supervision. Um, so what you would have to do is send an email to james at capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. That's C-A-P-S-A-N-D-S-T-E-M-S-L-A-W at gmail.com. And ask him to get the discovery from Jill Randall versus County of Orange at all. I don't know that we have video depositions from that case otherwise i'm sure you would have already published them but in our old archives we will have the discovery from that case and we can get that to you or the complaint as well so just shoot james an email ask him for that and we'll work on getting that together for you and then obviously once he has it he'll probably go ahead and publish it to patreon as well all right um what else do we have uh, buh, 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 buh. I think that's probably pretty much it for the night. Don't you name, let's say, don't you name all involved with the court drop the ones not responsible? Um, yeah, generally what we do is we'll go through the records. We cast a very broad net. Anybody that appears to have had a fingerprint on the bad act or the bad series of acts, we'll name them, you know, and then through discovery and the litigation process, we'll sort of pare it down to the real, real wrongdoers. But yeah, we do cast a pretty broad net. All right, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you all for attending tonight's stream. Uh, don't forget, if you are not already subscribed to Patreon, it's here in the, it's right, uh, right there, right there. HTTPS www.patreon.com forward slash caps and stems. Join up. Everything that you do there helps us out a little bit. Um, also, a, an added benefit is we do office hours every Sunday at five. And if you're a, either a Patreon subscriber at any level or a YouTube member at any level, then you're entitled to join us on um, office hours with your questions and comments. There's a nice group of people there. We all chat quite a bit, exchange ideas, stuff like that. There's a few attorneys in the group that show up too. So it's kind of fun. It's in my view worthwhile. But anyway, tomorrow will be Nicole Stratman, volume one, part four. Remember, if you have any questions or anything as you're going through this video tonight or any other video, please do email them in to capsandstemslawgmail.com. I'll put that up here one more time. It is capsinstems at gmail.com. Well, thank you, Lawrence. Thanks for uh, being a stalwart supporter and attendee. Yeah, if you email your questions into capsinstemslaw at gmail.com, we'll do our best to answer them periodically uh, during the lives throughout the week. Questions sent into Patreon. You know, since you guys are paying for it, you get more immediate response. And uh, email, actually, email notification gets sent to me, and I'll try and deal with it right away. Just a reminder, if you look right below the video, there's a video description. If you click or tap Show More, there are tons of links to catch up on, review past videos, as well as that Patreon link. For those of you who are not watching us through YouTube, however, I don't know if, if that all appears or not. I know it does on YouTube, so if it doesn't appear on whatever platform you're viewing on, go subscribe to us on YouTube and um, then you'll be able to get the links. If you guys are enjoying the content, please show your support by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, doing all the things that you need to do to push us out there. We really do appreciate it. In the end, we really do hope the content we're providing may help you in some way. 
to navigate through the challenge you're facing, whether it's in litigation or, you know, life in general. And uh, I guess that's it. You guys have a great rest of your evening, and I'm pretty sure I'll be with you tomorrow night.